For this week's Sabbath Sunday, I have an excerpt for you from the podcast that Darren and I do called Into the Void, a Black Sabbath podcast. We go through all the Black Sabbath albums in the order that they were released, and we also do the Ozzy and the Dio solo albums. So for this uh, most recent podcast, we discussed Ozzy's The Ultimate Sin. And what we do on the podcast is that we first give our early memories of the record, our general thoughts on the record, and then we go track by track. So what you'll see in this excerpt is us discussing the song Never Know Why. I will leave a link in the description down below where you can stream the podcast. It's also available on Apple and Spotify. So uh, go ahead and check it out and check out all the other episodes that we have done so far. All right, so here we go. Enjoy, and we'll see you at the next Sabbath Sunday. Never Know Why. Uh, I really like the main riff in this. Uh, I like the way the song starts with Jake doing that kind of like sound effect, feedback, sound effect thing. When the main riff kicks in, it's a super cool riff. Love that. Uh, I really have trouble, and I remember even at the time, I do have a memory of this, when it gets to this line, the... Uh, Oh, no, you'll never know why. We rock, rock, rock. We rock, rock. It's, uh, yeah. No, it just doesn't. Uh, no. I'm, it's so awkward. And the lyrics in general, it's just so disappointing because I'm such a big fan of Bob's lyrics here, of Bob's lyrics in general. But this just whole, like, uh, if we're offensive and pose a threat, you know, this whole, like, oh, you don't understand this, you know, rock and we rock, it's rock yeah. and roll. And I mean, whereas Dio saying we rock, it comes from a totally different place. It totally works for Dio. This line and the way he keeps repeating it, we rock, right? like over and over again, it just sounds so uh, like, I don't know, you couldn't have come up with something better than that. <laughs> you know, with, listen, there's a line in here. I, I, I leave you cold and in disgust. Don't try to tame me, you'll eat my dust. I yeah. mean, it's just like, and I just can't get past the we, that we rock thing. It's so corny. Uh, the way there's like echo on Ozzy's voice, rock, rock. It's, oh, yeah. it's like Twisted Sister or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I was going to bring that up. It, it's very, it, it's like, it's somebody sitting there and in the control booth and, you know, is basically mapping it out because they think they're a genius and they're like, okay, well, what we really need to do is we need to bring, have you heard of the band Twisted Sister? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they had a really big hit with, we're not going to take it. And then I want to rock. So kids can really get behind that concept of, of rock. They want to rock. <laughs> Kid, the kids want to rock we rock they rock let's rock we all rock we, let's rock that that well I, isn't that kind of like meaningless and and trivial no it's really important the kids of, of today the youth of today and you don't understand but but i do the kids of today want to rock so we have to make a song for them even though there's been a few already we have to make another song for them about rocking and that's what this is and it's meaningless and the lyrics are pretty vapid basically and it's you know it's I, I'm almost embarrassed for Bob Daisy because he's certainly capable of writing really thought-provoking and interesting lyrics if, if not yeah on a, something brilliant but but thought-provoking and, and interesting and creative and Mr. Crowley was a creative and it was sort of like a uh, you know, I had the occult uh edge to it which was made it kind of exciting and, and you know edgy yeah. and, but it was interesting you know it, I mean, it certainly got me to get up and go through the funk and wagnall encyclopedia <laughs> and look up <laughs> alistair crowley you know <laughs> but yeah and even when they sang about like if you go back to bark at the moon you're no different to me you know it's it, it, it's the same a little bit of the same sentiment like you're you're casting me out but it's just done in a much better way. And then just hear it, it just doesn't work. And, but I will say, I love that main riff at the beginning. And I really like the guitar solo in it. The guitar solo like drops down into like sort of a darker minor key sounding thing. And it's a pretty cool solo from Jake. It's just, you know, and Bob mentions that 
although he did write the lyrics on this, there are some bits and pieces and lines here and there that are Aussies. So I would like to believe that maybe this whole we rock, we rock thing was something that, that Ozzy came up with just, just to fill some space. But Yeah, I, I guess. I, I, I definitely don't think it was sincere. I don't think it was a song that Ozzy was particularly uh, had a lot of uh, commitment to lyrically but maybe i don't know i don't think ozzy had much commitment to anything other than trying to keep his career happening and and uh you know just keeping things moving along hitting the stage and going through the cycles that he's been doing all of his life i mean that's pretty much what it is it's release an album uh people write it for you you know you figure out some melodies which he's good at and i think he probably likes doing that and then um the album gets written, records it, go on tour, stay on tour for like what, six months or something like that. Get off tour, take a, take a short break and do the whole thing over again. I mean, that's that's really what, what Ozzy's about. Uh, he's never written any lyrics, so we really can't say where his head's at from a lyrical standpoint. So I think he just pretty much regurgitates what anybody writes down for him. I mean, he may have the final say is, I don't like these or can you do better than that? But he doesn't, he doesn't write the lyrics. Um, he did have a falling out with, with, uh, with Bob Daisley and Bob Daisley quit. <laughs> and then Ozzy, and I, he done this, he's done this before. He did it on Bark the Moon, didn't he? Where they have, a, they have a, a fight and Bob leaves. And then one of them, either Ozzy or Sharon, calls him and says, hey, can, can we yeah. get together and meet? Because I think they understand <laughs> that. That poor guy, it's, Bob Daisley, he's got to be like, oh, yeah. my God. But it must pay well. I mean, to, yeah. to be able to, like, suck it up. And and God only knows what's said in the course of these arguments or these, these uh, you know, these, these fights that they have. But I'm sure it's not good. And then to call him back and say, hey, Bob, uh, can, can we get together and talk this out over lunch? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but he couldn't come back because I think he was committed to Black Sabbath at the time. And uh, he's getting ready to do, or he's writing, or he's playing on uh, what would be the Eternal Idol, I believe. But it wasn't either. He just didn't want to come back, or he was already committed to something else. I thought it was Black Gary Sabbath. Moore. I think Gary Moore, Moore possibly. Moore. Yeah, that would probably be something that was closer to the actual timeline. But he does agree to to, to write the lyrics, and it's almost like he was kind of like the way that the lyrics are so. We're, we're talking about how they're so like contrived and corny. It's almost like he did it as a almost in a passive aggressive movie. yeah yeah i'll write you some lyrics <laughs> you want lyrics yeah. oh, you want lyrics? this for a lyric we rock we rock we rock and repeat it 16 times yeah so i don't know you know it's anybody's guess as to what was going on at the time all right but, well 